Welcome to London Bridge YouTube channel. Today we are together with Patty. Patty, welcome. Hi, thank you. Hi. It's a pleasure to be with you here today and welcome to our garage, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> nice car. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Patty, can you tell us more about yourself as a start? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Um, so I am English originally, but I've lived out of England for more than half of my life. Um, I grew up in Belgium and America and lived for a long time in Australia and a few other places. So, um, so now I really enjoy working internationally and helping people who want to work internationally because I've seen for myself that it's really interesting and uh, uh, gives me a lot of energy working in, in that space and, and I want to be able to share those opportunities with others. So how did you start doing business in the UK and what's your current services, what's your you know, services you're providing? Um, at the moment I um I work as a um, I work in cult in cultural diversity, specifically in the diversity and inclusion. So helping people engage with both customers and employees from different cultural backgrounds to mm -hmm. themselves. So, and the do you mean the international people who are trying to do business in the UK, or it's like a both? Trip? So oh. people who are leaving the UK to work internationally, and mm -hmm. people who are coming to the UK from international. Both the professionals and the entrepreneurs. Uh, yes, absolutely. So because every business relationship starts with a conversation between two people. Yes. Oh, it might start with an email actually, and you can make <laughs> a lot of mistakes in that sort of. But um, but you know, at some point quite early in the relationship there are going to be two people having a conversation mm -hmm. so and people can create quite the wrong impression that you know yeah, they think they are making the right impression and actually they're doing something which is very rude in that country or uh, you know or any, any other problems sort of like that so um, uh, so what I do is help prepare people for their move so that they are more likely to, to have success there so mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit like running a marathon you know you've got to you've got to keep practicing yes, you've got yeah. to do your preparation and uh, it's not and easy it's not easy and and it also um yeah it it, it it is something that you just have to keep practicing and something that you do automatically so for example your sales style that in um in another country in france you might have a particular way that you go about selling your goods mm -hmm, and services mm -hmm. to people and it works for you and you are successful there and you might think, well, I'll, I'll just go to England and I'll keep doing that because that's my style and it works. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily work in another It's the main delusion, so. I guess. Ab absolutely, yeah. And it's a bit like saying, well, you know, English works really well for me yeah. in England. Um, so I'll just keep speaking English. <laughs> <laughs> so, Patty, if you don't mind, can you give us small tips about, you know, doing business, interacting with people in the UK? Um, y yes, absolutely. Um, I, I think... Um, as we all know, the UK is potentially a hugely profitable market, but it's a really difficult market. So um, one of the issues is that people are, um, I would say, quite risk averse here and quite traditional. And so they move slowly. They don't like to make a decision too quickly. They like to think about things and they absolutely don't want to be pushed into making a decision. So they really want to have time to think about it. And the more that somebody tries to hurry them to into mm. making a decision, the more they will, we say, dig their heels in and they'll just say, no, like, I'm ready in my own time. And um, so that's really a key um, learning, I think, for anyone wanting to come here. The other is the way in which we, we tend to keep business and social quite separate here. Mm. So there's a little bit of overlap, but not much. So for example, somebody coming from a South American country, um, Brazil, for example, they might look to build a much closer personal relationship with somebody that they wanted to sell their goods to in the UK. But actually, the UK person wouldn't want that. So in Brazil, you would spend time having dinner, playing golf, going horse riding, to get to know each other as people. Yeah. But in the UK, if you suggest that, people are like, why would, no. I, why would no. I do that? You know, That's I, the reason. I, I only want to buy your cardboard boxes. I don't yeah. want to go horse riding with you, you know. So, yeah. so and, and that's, you know, a bit like I was saying before, there are things that you just do automatically and you think, well, this is, this is great. This is how the system works. But the systems are completely different in different countries. Yeah, it is. Thank you. So you're also providing services to your customers and also you, know, you need to find the customers as well. So how you reach your customers, how you 
value your customers or services? For me personally, I find networking the most effective. So that's face-to-face -face networking because what I do is about people. And so it makes sense to me to go and talk to people, to have face-to-face -face interactions. Um, because you get a lot more opportunity to build rapport, to start to build trust between people. It, it happens a lot more quickly, providing you are doing it the right way. <laughs> um, but I also um, maintain quite a good online presence. So I'm pretty active on, on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Um, and, um, and I have a, a regular newsletter. I send out a little mm. podcast. Content is the kid, kink. <laughs> it, it is about content, but it's also actually about staying in people's minds. Mm. Yes. Because I find, because business develops slowly here, it's very easy to have a conversation with someone and you come away from the meeting thinking, well, you know, that was good. Yeah. But if I'm not a priority for them, I just slip down the to-do yeah, list. It is, it is. And a year later, I think, oh, you know, what happened to that? <laughs> so, um, so I've started doing this, this newsletter and it's, lit, it's very short. And what I do is I pick a story from the news, mm -hmm. um, something that has happened, mm -hmm. you know, anywhere. And I talk about the impact that it might have on your business. So you customize it with respect to your services and create a valuable content for yes. people to take and so care. people think oh well that's fun and that's interesting yeah, and they enjoy reading it um so for example the the first one i did was a story about women in japan being told that they weren't allowed to wear glasses because it was not feminine right so <laughs> even air hostesses <laughs> which was a bit worrying so um but what i did was i used i i, I used that as an opportunity to talk about the um, the embedded sexism in Japan, yes, yeah. and therefore what a, potentially what a problem that was going to be for a woman wanting to go and work in Japan. So, yeah, definitely. Um, and that newsletter just helps keep me in touch. So it's a very low key sell. Um, so so it's, how people can be a member of your uh, newsletters? Do you have a email? Um, yes, they can. Um, they can go to my website, and or they can email me if they go to my website, Cultural Chemistry. Dot co dot uk um, they can email me and sign up for the for the newsletter oh, so great. but something like that works well in the uk because you're giving somebody something you're yeah, not just yes. getting in touch no. you know for no reason but but in in somewhere like japan for example people would call in and see their customers mm. and they would just go in and talk about golf and things for a while and just to maintain the warmth of the relationship oh. um, which is something that, you know, in the UK, you think, well, I don't waste my time if you haven't actually got something for me. You know, yeah, it's great to see you, but five minutes is enough, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it is. It is the differences, you know, we form up. That's right. And I think, you know, in Mediterranean countries, it is a lot more about that interpersonal relationship. Definitely. And you don't just catch up with a quick phone call, you know, how is it? Is there anything I need? You know, is there anything I can give you? It's shall we have lunch and catch up? And yeah. then we actually spend a bit yeah. more time talking and then opportunities come from that. So yeah. I think it's quite challenging for people who come from those relationship countries um, to come to somewhere like the UK it can feel quite cold yeah. and quite difficult to actually to build relationships with people because people kind of seem to be shutting the door in your face. Yeah, it is. Well, when we speak about these little differences, which yields up with big uh, problems, let's say. So what might be your suggestions for who are looking for doing business in the UK or international? I don't know. You know, one of the, the most common problems I see is that people who speak English well think that they will be fine because they confuse language with culture. So... One of the most important things I would say to people is even if you speak really good English, it's not going to be the same. It's not business as usual coming to, to work here. So, so do your research before you come. Do some reading about the business culture here, about the foundations and sort of of British cult and history, if you like, of, of British culture and values. Understand how and why people do things differently and anticipate that it's going to be different. Um, uh, you know, in addition to the language issues, I, I think the other most common problems are that people don't anticipate difference. Mm -hmm. And then when they encounter it, they don't know how to deal yeah, with it. Yeah. 
So <laughs> then they feel that people don't understand me. That's right, and 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 also one of the worst things is that we we jump really quickly to judging, yes. right or wrong, and and we don't say, oh well, it's interesting that they do it that way in England, unlike the way that we do it in South Africa. Yeah. Um, they just think, oh, it's wrong the way they do it in England, <laughs> and then the, yeah. immediately there's a negativity in yeah, the relationship. So. But actually, if you think of culture as a bit like a language, mm -hmm. that you know, if if we went to Germany, we would assume that we'd have to speak German, and we would go into a German restaurant, and there would be lots of traditional German dishes, and no, nobody has a problem with that. Yeah. But why would we expect business to be done the yeah. same way everywhere? Yeah. You know. It, All corporate culture is informed by national culture, yes. so um, so it's not surprising that business is done differently in different places. So I would really say to people that you know, a um, well, for a start, don't overlook the importance of having good language skills. Mm -hmm. And if you're mm -hmm. thinking about going to work in an English-speaking country or any other language mm -hmm. which you don't have. T start taking some language lessons. Yeah. You know, just to be able to have a basic conversation with people, it shows a lot the efforts that you've gone to, mm -hmm. that you're really interested, that you're serious about this. Mm -hmm. To be able to go into a, a banquet with Chinese clients and to be able to raise a toast to them at the dinner, little things like that yeah. can go, a, a, yeah. you know, a long way. So, um, so, so, you know, work on your language, do your research, prepare for difference. Um, And you know, focus focus on the end game. So um, I wrote a, a book a couple of years ago called Cultural Chemistry: Simple Strategies for Bridging Cultural mm -hmm. Gaps. And I'm originally a, a coach, so I work as a coach and trainer now. And I created a model in the book called the Four R's. So the Four R's stand for rewards. So what's in it for you? What's to be gained? Mm -hmm. You know, all coaching starts from this goal setting of. Okay, it's worth investing my time and my money in this because there's lots to be gained. So, next R is research. What do you need to know? You're going somewhere completely different. You need to understand how people communicate, how they build relationships, how they negotiate. You know, how do you build your pipeline? How do you actually go out and start meeting clients? How do other people do it? Can you talk to other people who've done it and learn from their experiences? The third R is reflect, and that's really about sort of following on from what I said about judging right and wrong. It actually, how do you respond to difference? Are you open to doing things differently? Or do you think, oh, you know, yeah, I can do it this way, but my way is much better. Take it in personal. Yes, yeah, that's right. Do you take it personally when you invite someone for lunch and they keep saying no? Or do you actually understand? Well, okay, that's not the British way to do that. Yeah. So, so that's fine. I won't keep pushing it. So, so that's really a self-awareness piece. It's understanding what, how you are responding to difference, but also recognizing what it is about you that other people might find different mm -hmm. and difficult. Yeah, yeah, and it's also one of the secrets of the real and successful business at the same time. Absolutely, yeah, and and thinking about well, how can I build rapport? With people, if I'm somebody who always likes to sort of be near people and be very yeah. enthusiastic and and sell with passion, but actually I'm talking to somebody who wants the data, you yeah. know, and they want the hard line evidence on this. Well, I'm wasting my breath and yeah. I'm wasting their time. Yeah, it is. So I like to say we've got two eyes and two ears and one mouth. So use your eyes and ears first. <laughs> you know, look around, you notice yeah, what's yeah. going Observe on. Observe more. Observe speak less. more. Speak less. Absolutely. And just, you know, take the temperature of, of yeah, the room, is, if you like, before you launch into, you know, business as yeah, usual. Yeah, so yeah. I think that that's really important. My last R is reach out. So when you've got to a stage where you think, okay, well, so they do it this way and I do it this way. And clearly there are lots of differences. Yeah. What are some things that we can do to to make a meaningful relationship yeah. anyway? A, so there might be a bridge between them. That absolutely is a bridge. Um, you just uh, and I often say, you know, if there are two people on a bridge and one person waits for the other person to walk all the way across, it's going to take a lot longer yeah. for things to get yeah. started. So ideally, if you can, you know, do some reaching out, and the other person will do some reaching out. You meet in the middle. Or you need to create a reason for him to that research for you. Yeah, to start walking towards yeah. you. Yeah. So, um, and and that's obviously, you know, partly the product, the service that you yeah. sell, yeah. the the fact that you are appealing as someone to do business yeah. with. But it is also about things like 
building rapport with people and uh, and again back to language you know remembering that if you have english as a second language that what you say might not be what is heard <laughs> and I, that what, i'm really familiar with it. <laughs> <laughs> and that what you hear might not what we you know be what is Which said is also so safe, yeah. and you know the english are famous for not liking to cause offence and to let people down gently right yeah, but yeah. we assume that people know that about us yeah. so if you come to me with an idea that i really don't like at all and i'll say well what will i well, think yeah. about it's good i appreciate yes yes and they'll say mm, interesting yes yeah. and interesting means there's no, no way yeah, we're yeah, ever yeah. doing that yeah, yeah thank you for your time and bye bye <laughs> but you might think oh that's good they're it's really good. interested it's a million, <laughs> million dollar business yeah. behind it no yeah. it's not and it's all about well, we don't like to to be rude to people yeah, is, so um but you know that's a, that's a really important thing is, to be able to read between the lines in absolutely. that way so okay. so there is always a way to make a connection okay. Um, it's just very easy to jump in and assume that what we have done will before yeah, yeah. will work again, but there's no yeah, reason that yeah, it should. I know. Okay, thank you, thank you for everything, all the knowledge you share with us. You're very These welcome. are very vital, and I know that before doing any kind of business, you need to know that basics, or you will waste a lot of time, and probably the money that you shouldn't. So I, I strongly recommend everyone. Yeah, and I, I, absolutely. And, and it, this is really about engaging with your new customers. Yes. So, and if you don't have that good level of engagement, they're not going to want to buy from you because no. people want to do business with people that they like and that they trust. Yes, definitely. And, and there, are, there that, are hundreds of other suppliers who can provide that trust. That's right. And, and, and often that comes from somebody that you feel comfortable with. So the more that you can make yourself more definitely. like them, yeah, the more successful. But it doesn't mean be. that you will lose yourself or absolutely identity, not. but you need to no. understand the difference and appreciate it at yeah, the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank Pleasure. you. Thank you. Today we were together with Patty. Uh, she shared very valuable insight and information doing any international business at any country and we will have more guests in the near future.